kid. Seriously. <laughs> Welcome to a strong edition of the Star Wars In Review podcast. It's the only podcast that'll always shoot first, whether we're by ourselves or not. Over there is my better podcasting half. He's Luke Neitzel. This side of the table, it's Maya Madrid. Every so often, we get together to go over Star Wars news, answer your serious, kid seriously questions, and review review an episode from the Clone Wars. Luke Neitzel, how you doing, buddy? I was doing better before you said that we shoot first when we're alone. <laughs> But I suppose it's accurate. Well, it's, it's, I'm not wrong. <laughs> no, not at all. What's been going on with you? I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, it has been a while. We actually got on a normal schedule so that these will come out a little closer to when we record them. So it seems like we took a, a long break. Sabbatical. Yeah, yeah. So it, it feels like we haven't done this in forever. But it, it, it's, been, it's been fine. I've enjoyed my downtime and going to work constantly, which is always fun. So Are I've you been... implying that you enjoyed your time away from me? Yes, very much well, so. Uh... So I will... harsh. We've only been together a couple weeks, buddy. <laughs> I know. It's rough. So I'll try and make it through this, the the pains of having to talk to you for 30 minutes. Speaking but... about pain, uh, Black Panther came out recently, and I was set to go uh, last Saturday. Boom Madrid had a fever, Oof. so we had to cancel our tickets from Vending or wherever my wife got the tickets from. So I was going to go on Saturday. That was sold the hell out. I drove oh, really? all the way to the theater, and it's not a short drive from rural wisconsin where i come from yeah so I, you still haven't seen it i still haven't seen it i'm trying to see it oh. saturday and it's a bummer man what a weird reversal of fortune because i wasn't even planning on going and i had a friend call me and want to go friday night is this a friend that you're not sick of yeah exactly exactly well, he doesn't live in rural wisconsin so i i can throw a rock and basically hit his house so yeah so we went and saw it it's a good time i think you're gonna like it i'll be interested to hear what you think yeah we'll probably talk about it next week with a spoiler heavy rendition Let's move on to the news. So, new this week, according to StarWars.com, The Last Jedi is going to be released March 13th on digital, with the Blu-ray coming out just two weeks later. Special features are going to include The Director and the Jedi, which is an in-depth look at Johnson's journey and putting the movie together. Balance of the Force, which is about the decisions that he made regarding the Force in the movie. Uh, audio commentaries, short documentaries about the space battle, the crate battle, one about Snoke, one about Circus's performance as Snoke, and the big one, 14 deleted scenes. I know you're going to buy this movie. You said as much as soon as we came out of the theater. Um, but are you going to buy the Blu-ray or digital? And what sorts of things are you most excited to see? So I always buy the Blu-ray combo pack, even though I've never actually downloaded the digital. But for whatever reason, I just buy them all and have all the sheets there. So I'm I'm in likes to have everything in a disc i don't own that many dvds anymore i used to own 400 you gave half of them to me i gave half of them to you i sold most of the rest uh to disco round or whatever those places are um and bought soccer gear with the money because with netflix and all those things i just don't own too many movies so i keep my horror movies and i keep some of my favorites like star wars and i have the the first avenger not captain america but the joss whedon first avengers movie um and some of my other favorites so i have about 20 dvds blu-rays uh but i like the actual physical disc i'm all about deleted scenes i skip a lot of the documentaries on most of the movies i'll probably check those out i'm sure at some point but the deleted scenes are the things that i always get so excited for even though most of the time i watch them and i'm like yeah you probably should have cut that but for whatever reason that excites me because there could always be that one amazing thing or scene or character that you wanted that you didn't get that could be in there so i used to have the same feeling about uh discs as you do i'd always get the blu-ray the combo pack and really would only go to amazon and buy the digital if i was too lazy to go to the store for that particular movie uh unfortunately my copy of the force awakens had a skip and my wife was like we're done with this we are going digital and so since then i've been buying digital every time uh so i kind of go with that round what so you you prefer the disc why do you prefer the disc out of curiosity I just like getting the box art and putting it in the Blu-ray and and having it come up. There isn't a logical reason. It's probably just because that's what I've always done. Um, Just like there's certain there's certain bands that you know I download singles, but if uh, Pearl Jam CD comes out, I have to buy the physical CD and get the physical album art and all those things. I don't have a good rationale for it. It's just what I do. Right on. The second bit of news today. I should I should say that we're a little sad. Oh. To talk about this. 
We're sad this week to pass along our condolences to the fans out there regarding the death of the Wilhelm scream. <laughs> Used in Star Wars movies, Indiana Jones, and hundreds more, the audio track is a favorite among film buffs such as myself. Lucasfilm explains that they've made a new scream to take its place, and that though, though they're not willing to discuss it as of yet, there's apparently a story to go along with it. Luke... Tell an audience in mourning, are you a fan of the Wilhelm screen? Are you going to miss it? And do you like it when films cross genres and stick in parts from others, uh, like the late sound snippet did for so long? What is your opinion on the Wilhelm screen? I had not heard that news, and that's pretty lame. I mean, it's something that they've done for a while, and it's something you hear in a million movies and TV shows. I always enjoy it, and always. I think we might even have heard it in uh, a couple Clone Wars episodes as well. So I don't know why you would take it away. Whatever you replace it with isn't going to be as well done as a, a good Wilhelm screen. Which have, have you ever seen the actual original film that that's from? I have not, no. It's, so, it's a western and it's a guy getting shot and just this exaggerated scream that he makes is hilarious. So I, I don't know why you would bother to replace it. I love having little kind of Easter eggs like that. To me, that's the same as putting any other type of Easter egg you would put in a Star Wars movie or a comic book movie or any other type of movie. It's fun to find it especially when you recognize it and hear it come. I, I don't know why you would do this. And it, it better be a damn good scream. It better be Bubba Fett going into the Sarlacc in the worst death ever, something of that nature that you'll at least recognize it because I don't want to have to go read an article to explain to me why it's funny in the next movie. Uh, we got breaking news tonight. Just yesterday, J.J. Abrams said that the script for episode nine is done. It's finished, so... For all intents and purposes, the story of what happens to Kylo Ren, Rey, Finn, and Poe has been decided. I mean, aside from revisions and that sort of thing. What are your thoughts on it being over as far as this trilogy? And are you willing, or are you excited, I should say, to start looking towards the next trilogies? Are you kind of ready to move on? Like, what are your thoughts on it's it's done? Yeah, I you know, we, we still have, you know, they still have to film it and release it and all that. So I like the build-up and anticipation of those things, one of the things I don't like as much is how quickly Last Jedi followed A Force Awakens. Like, I would have rather have had it spaced out a couple more years. Or, you know, I think in the, the prequel trilogy, they would have two years off in between movies. And I would have rather they did that with the main saga. And maybe we would have had Han Solo come out in December instead of Last Jedi. And Last Jedi would have come this next December. So I think they've gone through it a little quick, which I wouldn't have liked. But... Um, I'm ex excited to see how they finish it off. You know, we have opposite views of, of these movies, but I, I think as a whole, it could really, this, if this one, third one really ties it together, we'll probably be in the same place on it. So I'm excited to see what they do. When it does come to a conclusion, I would like to take a break from the main saga. And I don't know what the plan is, but they certainly have enough other things that they have in the pipeline with Ryan Johnson's trilogy and the Game of Thrones guys trilogy where I want to see them go in a different direction so that I'm excited when they eventually, because I know they will, whether it's five years or 20 years, return to the Skywalker saga. I think you're right on that. I, I think the actors kind of want a break, just judging by what Daisy Ridley has said, and I don't think you can continue this saga without Rey. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming she doesn't die in Episode Nine, uh, but without, you know, if Kylo Ren goes the way of the Dodo, you're going to need either Kylo Ren or Rey to continue this story. I mean, Poe and Finn are just not as... I mean, maybe, I, I guess I shouldn't say that. You could continue with the story with them, but the, those are the big draws of this, who this saga is really about. So, I, th I think it's all about, uh, about anticipation and making sure you're making a story that fits the direction you want to go. And I would hate to see them try to just continue the saga because the saga will make money without a, a great plan in place. So hopefully that's what they're working on. And who knows, maybe these Ryan Johnson movies or, you know, uh, Benioff and Weiss movies will create things that they can then fold back into a Skywalker saga later on. And maybe not. But j just make sure you're doing it for the right reasons and not just forcing movies on us because you can cash in. Here's a quick question from last week that I should have asked, but I'm going to ask it now. With Benioff and Weiss and with Ryan Johnson, there's been a lot of talk about Benioff and Weiss doing some sort of old republic sort of political drama that would sort of hearken from game of thrones i've kind of gone with the opinion that i would like it as the same time going on the same time as the next ryan johnson trilogy so you would have you know if they did 
you know, we don't know what it's going to be. But if they did some sort of political thriller, and Ryan Johnson, as some people are speculating, does something with the Jedi, that you could create this cinematic universe with multi layers similar to the Marvel cinematic universe. Would you rather it jump around in time? Would you rather it all be happening concurrently? What's your What are your thoughts on that? My initial reaction would be I'd be kind of fine if you had two trilogies alternating in years that were completely different timelines. So you have an old Republic and you have a current thing going on as long as they're compelling stories. I'm not opposed to making them kind of interlock or show us different dimensions of the same universe at the same time. But my initial reaction is, is show us lots of different things. I want lots of variety. I'm worried. My one worry would be if, if they're all working in the same thing, if they have to... I don't want them to have to force in references to each other and gestures if it's not where they want to go. I think that can be a fallback in Marvel sometimes, um, especially if you look at Age of Ultron. I think that was a big problem I had with it, is that they just force too much stuff to set up other stuff. So as long as they're letting these filmmakers do their own independent thing, I'm kind of okay with wherever it's set. All right, so that is enough with the Star Wars news. Let us go ahead and switch gears to the Kid Seriously serious questions the question this week is from garth friend of the show who writes while on a recent trip to florida i saw a woman with a darth maul tattoo covering most of her hamstring awesome or the start of an ad florida woman t- tweet what are your thoughts on that <laughs> um so it's very fitting that this happened in in florida i would assume so uh, you know I, i'm not against tattoos um i have tattoos even though i don't show them off or tell people about them very often and, and and tattoos can look good on people depending on what they are and where they are and the type of shape they're in and, and whatnot. I am not in favor of giant character tattoos, really of any kind. Uh, I, I think it's an odd choice to go with, and I'm someone doing a Star Wars podcast in a basement for no money. So obviously I have some affinity for the subject matter and whatnot, but you know, do you want to be 80 years old and have Darth Maul on your leg? You know, I just it's, it's it's not a choice that I would necessarily recommend to anyone else. But you know what? It's your body. If it makes you happy, have at it. Uh, so, so to answer your question, do I want to be eighty and have a giant Darth Maul tattoo? Absolutely, I do. Well, there you uh, go. <laughs> no, I I don't have tattoos mostly because I'm a big boss. But if I did, hey man, get whatever makes you happy. Whatever makes you happy, it's your body, roll with it. If you love Darth Maul, I'm going to question that because he he wasn't a character who really had a lot of screen time. Maybe it's maybe it's a huge uh, Star Wars Rebel, Star Wars Clone Wars fan. Uh, we'll get to all that with, with Darth Maul. Uh, but, Coolest yeah. looking character, though. Well, I, would, I guess it is, yeah, if you're trying to look tough. You know, if you really love Grand Moff Tarkin, do you really want to tattoo that face on your... On your hamstring, just because it's the cool, your favorite character. Do you, do you know anybody who has Tarkin as their favorite character? No, oh, but okay. you know, I don't know anyone else that would want to put Peter Cushing on their, their on their, their leg, no matter what. Yeah, on their cushion, Peter Cushing on your cushion. Exactly. Uh, next question is going to come from my daughter Boom. Uh, she wanted to ask when we were looking for uh, through some of the questions. She wanted to ask a question, so I told her I would. Hi, Boom. Uh, the next question comes from her, and she says, Why don't they have as many girls as men in the movies? Compared to the men, there's barely any girls. What are your thoughts on that? I think that is a good question, and I think it is a problem that needs to be corrected. And I think the reason it has happened is because for as long as movies have been coming out, Men have been in control of most of the decisions and aspects, and um, people like to put themselves into everything. So we get lots of white men in charge of everything, and I'm a white man, and I'm sick of seeing people that look like me and everything. So I'm sorry it has to be like that. I think we are slowly getting to a place where it's getting better. I hope you're finding female characters in there that you really like, like Ray or Jen Erso or other people that you can latch onto and identify with and see yourself being. Because I'm pretty sure that even at this age, boom, or at a future age, you would be able to kick as much butt as anyone else uh, in Notice the Star that he Wars didn't universe. Swear. He didn't swear because he knows I'm that talking, Boom is going to listen to this. Talking, nice. talking directly to her. So <laughs> I think it's just going to get better and better, and you're going to find even more and cooler characters that are um, a lot more like you. So, And you know what? If, if you want to see more, too, and it's something that you enjoy, maybe you can be someone who stars in a Star Wars movie when you're older or writes or directs or picks all the people who get to be in a movie because I know you do a great job. Yeah, she is the ray of my life. Well said. Let us switch gears now 